Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 13 of our Be the Beast Neotech series. Today, we've done a bit of off-camera work, and now it's mainly completing these quests down here in Final Challenge. One big one was this chicken right here. I thought it was simply a clay chicken, which you actually get from a quest, by the way, so I was like, oh, that's easy enough. No, you actually need a 10-10-10 chicken. So, we set this little guy up right here with a breeder. And we have a lot of clay chicken eggs. If we ever need clay, we can crack these open to get some clay. However, I just bred chickens, two clay chickens initially, and then got to these guys. Got these guys, and yeah, we have so many clay chicken eggs, as you see here. I just kept breeding chickens together. This is the original chicken I'm pretty sure I got. And then we just got a 10, 10, 10. Pretty easy. You just breed over and over. Down here, we've done a bit more work. And we also have a time torch. I'll show you why. And here, I won't show too much off. This incubator here is how you get it. You just need to provide it with water. So water tank and then also the humidity at heat 7 for my biome specifically. As you incubate. I didn't do much with chickens. I kind of just rushed them to get specifically that. And I'm not going to touch the mod again. Since that was the only necessity to get through the final challenge quest line. Now one more thing we did was the emeratic crystals. These guys were a pain. Not because it took a long time to actually use the power to get them it's the tall grass now i was able to find some however you're not able to get tall grass normally so say i come over to some tall grass right over here right with my shears you can't just shear tall grass that's just not how that works you get two short grass when you shear tall grass right and you can't like craft it to make two tall grass or anything like that you might be wondering how i found it well, let's take a little flight. Over here, right beside our base, is an arid highlands, which also acts as a savanna, which means you can find savanna villages. Now, I was lucky that the first chest I opened, I believe it was in this building right here. Oh, no, not this one. But this one has short grass, as you see. So you're able to find tall grass in these guys as well. Let's see if we can find one naturally. Oh, there we go. Found a tall grass. So yeah, just in the chests in Savannah Villages specifically, you can find tall grass, which is quite annoying. I'm going to open my temp pad to teleport back to the base, but there's also one more thing I want to show you, and this is a failed oil rig. So if you saw my backpack last episode, all of these blocks, I was going to build a giant oil rig for our oiling oil setup, and I spent way too long building this copper monstrosity out in the thing, and I was going to build a giant platform on it, and yeah, I, I had a really cool idea idea for a giant oil rig i even built this out with like ladders and stuff i i thought this looked really cool and then i just gave up on it so yeah we just have the oil rig as you saw in the last episode right beside our base and the oil rig project never actually made it off the ground but we might come back to it one day probably not though nevertheless back at our base go back to the basement you see i have four electric blast furnaces down here opposed to the one i have upstairs as well i made four more these guys are really cheap once you get canthal and yeah as soon as you unlock canthal these guys are really like super cheap to me. I've also upgraded these to 98,000 storage, so I just have 98,000 curved plates and plates on backup at all times, which is super nice. All of my ores have been processed through. I stopped processing aluminum specifically at the very end, so I have aluminum dust, so that we can make a bunch of non-doped and p-doped silicon plates, which I have automatically made crafting up here, just silicon going into a furnace, compressor, and then chemical reactor, same setup, and then we just have export buses on the back, and this time torch right here, which I never got into force craft and i might do force craft specifically for time torches because these guys are absolutely op they speed up ticks meaning blocks will work faster and if you can provide enough power that doesn't like cause issues with time torches however as you see making 128 empowered crystals gives you a single time torch so i stuck it on here because the ruby process to get chromium takes a long 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 time so i did this to get chromium as well as iron dust because iron dust will be used in ram i believe no iron dust will be used something in the processing line for these guys here don't remember which one though but i felt like i needed iron dust for something maybe i didn't who knows anyways gotta how to process a lot of chromium and obviously manganese so we have plenty of stainless steel once we need it and the last thing i did obviously was set up hv power now that was mainly to power the blast furnaces because these guys just simply don't work very fast without hv power so we're just using an hv diesel generator and a storage unit one of each for each blast furnace but then i ended up connecting them anyways and i powered 
our electrolyzer over here for the bauxite specifically with hp none of the rest are hp i was not going to upgrade them all also i don't feel like i'm ever going to need to upgrade them all mv is pretty good for those guys and then these machines all over here are also hp so that they run pretty fast however we also allowed ourselves to upgrade the master of ev and hp quests already so that's why these guys are done over here i didn't do master of quantum it's a billion fe and that's that's a really big waste of diesel at the moment before we get to nuclear energy however we already have titanium plates and dark matter completed so once we get 128 digital circuits a bunch of storage components which i prepared a bit for crowd fluid and boosted diesel we can get into here which will give us a watch flowing time which you can't craft which basically allows you to have infinite daytime it also gives us a creative fake shale oil so we don't have to drill anymore and then yeah these guys are going to be a pain the quantum circuits we need 64 of them so basically we need 256 digital circuits to be made which i might go ahead and do we might craft 256 digital circuits which sounds insane and then the teleportation cores are actually pretty easy to make so i'm not too worried about that however quantum circuits are a decent far away we need to make obviously the processing units which we haven't even done yet so we'll probably have to start with that and then we also switched our drill over here to stainless steel so that i in preparation for today's episode i had plenty of monsonite platinum titanium and tungsten mainly the platinum because that's what we're going to be processing today as well as monazite so without further ado let's just jump right into it the first thing we want to do is actually process the platinum now if you play greg tag platline is a, usually a big hurdle to get past however in this pack it's pretty simple and the quest line here will denote that it is simply three things and then you got to make platinum right it's very easy so with the platinum what you do is you master it to get a raw platinum very easy with this you chemically react it to get platinum sulfuric solution with sulfuric acid same same up as below with this you centrifuge it to get purified platinum sulfuric solution as well as a chance for a redeem dust which is pretty cool and then you get your platinum tiny dust with your sulfuric acid back and then this guy you just grabbed into that it's pretty simple so what we're going to do is we're going to macerate and then we're going to react centrifuge electrolyze so we need macerator chemical reactor centrifuge electrolyzer and then a packer and then we should be good and then we'll automatically import it into one of our ebfs Currently, I have all of these set to Osmium, by the way, if you're wondering. It is how I process all of my aluminum, because as you, if you remember, we had like 500,000 bauxite, and I processed it all down to aluminum. It's been about two, three days of leaving my world open and just letting everything process. And obviously, we're all long out of Emerald, so we're not getting any more analog circuits. But I've just left my world going, which also means I have a lot of EMC. Yeah, we have even more red matter blocks, and we already have 2.2 billion EMC in here. So yeah, we're up to 3.8 billion EMC, and this guy's also probably pretty full of Surges Quartz. Yeah, I've been emptying this guy out as well, just so we can get a decent amount of Surges Quartz or E2 stuff later in the future. Oh, one more thing I've gone ahead and done is make Jumbo Tanks, and these guys are pretty simple. It just requires Titanium Plates and Singularity Tanks, which is just iron and glass. You can also make it with steel, but glass is pretty easy to collect. We just use Auto Smelt on our Eclipse Alloy, hit up a desert or beach biome, and yeah, we have 10,000 glass from doing that, just for a small bit. However, yeah, these guys hold 1,024 buckets each, which is insane, which means I've also gone ahead and added them over here and yeah we've processed a decent amount of oil that we have to get through today however yeah i've just added them on here and then we'll just take them off as they fill up such as the ethylene right here but yeah these guys will act as nice buffers for solutions like the purified and platinum solutions sulfuric solutions so if i come down here i'm probably gonna set it up in the wall right here so first thing we obviously need is the macerator but i want to do this backwards so electric packer will be the last thing and that'll go right back into our system so that can actually just be the very bottom one i don't need like a buffer at the bottom like this because this will just get imported right back into our a system so we'll do electric pack on the bottom and then it needs to be right before is electrolyzed and sulfuric acid gets taken out pretty easy so we'll do electrolyzer go bottom like that auto export this does have a byproduct of iridium dust so what i would do is limited barrel like this and we'll do chemical reactor above like so and then chemical reactor is just that which just needs master to direct input however i will do a buffer because you do get three out of one so a buffer would be nice for this something like that perfect and that will be our full plat line which is far and away <laughs> much easier than anything you could ever get out of greg tech so we'll do machine holes and we'll hook it up to power i've just jankily connected our platinum up to here instead of using an exporter so we don't have to storage bus on that guy over there so we just have cable vomit back here to connect this guy to bring raw platinum in it automatically exports and then we'll just throw some hopper upgrades which i should have plenty of yeah and we'll do basic to iron we'll do basic 
to gold. And both those, which means we can get rid of some stack upgrades as well. Oh my god. Perfect. So this guy will automatically export down below with the chemical reactor. We now have sulfuric solution, and then we just gotta bring sulfuric acid into this guy, which also means we need to export it out the back, put it into here, and then we need to import sulfuric acid. Oh wait, no, this guy should be import, just because our sulfuric acid's already on orange. It would make it a lot easier. And I'll export with that guy. Perfect. So I just gotta bring the sulfuric solution up through the ground, and I should have sulfur pretty easily accessible through here. That's diesel. Here's sulfur. That is the input pipe. I want the output. If I was an output, where would I be? I guess I can output from here as well. Not a big deal. Oh, I already have sulfuric acid going this way. Nope, that's diesel. Oh no, that is not what I want to do. That is not a deal. Okay, hmm, how do I fix that? I didn't think they would connect. Ooh, that's awkward. Okay, yeah, I just messed everything up. Surely it'll correct itself, maybe? Let me hit it with a reload. I don't think it's gonna correct itself. I think I'm gonna have to take off all this pipe. Yeah. Those are the joys of using the same pipes for everything, <laughs> unfortunately. Apparently that can happen. Even though it was already coded diesel, apparently you can just accept. Yeah. That's not ideal, which is weird because I should have diesel flowing through there at all times, unless I'm out of diesel, that is. Nope, I'm definitely not out of diesel. I don't know how that happened, but we're going to have to remove all of our piping down here for diesel, which goes everywhere, by the way, because we have diesel over here too for these generators. Wow, okay. Well, the big one is this guy, so we do need to get rid of that for now. What's this guy doing? Oh, this keeps our armor charged. Yeah, we also need diesel over here. Really bad. Okay, we'll go with white fluid pipes for diesel for now, just so this doesn't happen again, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, this will be a pain to set back up. Okay, and I believe I have to... Yeah, I have to change these guys as well. Which I don't... Once again, I don't know how these guys would even fill with sulfuric acid at that point. So bizarre. But that is my fault for using the same colored pipes right beside each other like that. And we'll connect it back. Now everything should be fine. Yeah, but we have burned through a lot of our diesel, which means we're going to have to make a lot more diesel as well. But for now, I think it's a solution we'll figure out on another day. But diesel's back to running. I'll connect these guys later. But at the moment, we don't need pressure over there pressure was big over here but not on that side everything looks good you're getting power you're making pressure good okay now what was it doing sulfuric acid the original goal so i need to run sulfuric acid over to the machines so i'll connect it here just so i don't have to connect it again and sulfuric acid needs to go in this guy now i should be getting sulfuric acid over here yes perfect so platinum sulfuric solution will come out of the back go in here and why aren't you electrolyzing you don't need anything else you have power this is a centrifuge how did i mess that up okay well sometimes you just make mistakes and this is one of them we'll grab all of this out can i grab that out with the tank maybe can do other pets in here or something how am i going to grab this out without having to do like 16 tanks Ugh. i mean it is my fault for making an electrolyzer apparently yeah i need to purify it in the electrolyzer right but i need to centrifuge this guy first which means this guy needs to go down so the electrolyzer can stay there this just needs to go into a centrifuge first do i have one no i don't so with a centrifuge this guy should be able to just auto export down yeah i don't know why i even had a pipe there so if we do auto export down like so this should get platinum sulfuric solution which needs to you know what i can just remove the packer Platinum sulfuric solution goes into the electrolyzer, electrolyzer, or sorry, it goes into the centrifuge. The centrifuge then pushes it into the electrolyzer by doing this, and then auto export fluids. I just want to make sure this is correct. Yes, you electrolyze it, you get platinum tiny dust. Nope, I want this in the chest. I forgot. This needs the barrel. Oh my goodness. Okay, barrel for platinum, and then we'll do electric packer. Doesn't need to be out there. We'll do electrolyzer like this, cover this back up. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm having a rough time doing this apparently. With this solution, we take it, throw in the electrolyzer, auto export tiny dust into there. This will get electrolyzed. You have power? Yes, okay. Oh, it's for the, I was gonna say, why do I have an extra one? But yeah, we can just throw the electric packer right here. Doesn't need to be seen. However, we'll get platinum tiny dust with this guy, which needs to go into you. Perfect, and yes, nice. No, 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 no. Oh goodness, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna have to break it. <sighs> I'm having, yeah, should not have accidentally put that in there which means we lost a bunch of purified solution again and i really shouldn't be putting these walls back because apparently it is causing me more issues it's causing me more headaches than anything but for now connect that back up it's making the solution the sulfuric acid will go in and out of the tank over there so that's fine sulfuric acid is dealt with this is dealt with we're getting iridium tiny dust eventually this guy will slowly build up speed platinum's doing good going going i probably should have done a buffer for the sulfuric solution but i think it's fine once this guy gets going it should 
match platinum tiny dust will get packed over here and then we'll just export this back into our system but yeah now we have platinum on demand or sorry platinum automated fully passive and we don't have to worry about it oh it wants iridium tiny dust first before you get the platinum ingot okay that doesn't make sense considering you get a platinum ingot much faster than you get iridium tiny dust but i guess it's fine i guess you need it for the silicon wafer no you probably don't oh you do never mind you totally do need iridium tiny dust which once again one of our ebfs will be set to this by the way it'll be argon plus silicon dust plus iridium tiny dust we'll make, we'll make monocrystalline which means we need a silicon farm and silicon is pretty easy to get you could do certus quartz with sands this however requires you get certus, certus quartz dust on demand which isn't as easy and that's not the best way to get silicon by any means now the other two ways is by mm, electrolyzing emerald dust or lapis dust like we were doing previously for the emerald for beryllium this guy's pretty good for lapis as well you also do get sodium as a byproduct but we'll go with this because you do get six per which means we need to set up emerald dust and this is pretty easy we can either do an emc farm which macerates it which yeah we'll probably do this specifically we'll do another power flower which will go into a mechanism crusher actually that seems like a good idea or maybe one of the actual addition crushers because we already have this and this guy's pretty fast let's see if i take some emeralds grab some out of here so if i grab some emeralds how long does this take and it only does two at a time hmm yeah we'll probably go with the crusher from emc or sorry the crusher from mechanism and that just allows me to look good oh and you might have noticed i did upgrade these to infusing factories and that is because for this quest here you need lava which is ten thousand buckets of lava and you could do it with lava chickens didn't want to do chickens any more than they had to or you could do it with the lava generator from actual additions which also is terrible so that's an actually terrible way to do it i think so what i did was come to the nether and pump out some areas now i pumped out another area over here however this is my second one and i had to make a quantum entangle border to bring power to the nether which you might have seen on the other side i have energy i had actually added an f in there however to make the quantum entangle border you need ultimate control circuits and a teleportation core which require uh the higher tier of atomic alloys which is really easy to make by the way obviously it's just going through the entire process chain but yeah we needed two of these to bring power to the pump over here but yeah this got us our 10,000 bucks of lava but yes i want a crusher and then we'll do basic do i have a basic tier in cellar no i don't so basic advanced which is these guys and can i make an elite yes i can that's a quest I haven't made any of these yet and i will do elite so that should process pretty fast i don't think i have any speed upgrades left oh i have two energy and two speed okay we'll do 200 two speed we'll connect this up to aluminum cables down below and we'll set up a small emc farm for emeralds it came to that one which is really simple i will do the same thing we'll do dark matter relays i oh, sorry aren't red matter relays did i not make the red matter relays or the yeah i never actually duplicated these okay i did the dark matter ones oh we're having troubles with our tablet i see okay but that's red matter relay throw it in there red matter grab a stack and i also didn't make the other ones either wait don't tell me i'm using dark matter over here i don't think i am right no red matter relay okay i just never duplicated them for some reason i crafted the well i guess i did craft those specifically and i just made a stack of them i don't, I don't know what i do with them huh. but we'll do that and then we'll do this this and then condenser oh we need glowstone obviously so we'll do some janky stuff down here to make infinite emeralds Ooh, we seem to be exposing our roof here. Not the best. So something like this should work. And we'll grab stone, fill in the holes. I want mobs coming out of here randomly. Cool. So to build a proper condenser, basically, glowstone, red matter collector, red matter relay. And as you see, this guy's collecting at 16 light level. It'll slowly import into the red matter relay. But yeah, this guy collects and doesn't actually export fast enough, which I never, I will never understand why this doesn't process at the same speed. Also, flowing water. Let's turn you off. It's quite annoying. But yeah. Yeah, basically it is simply a star shape around this guy like so and it's not directional so it's fine to do something like this and you can do them on the bottom as well however at the rate that these transfer it is just not worth it like simply put it is not worth it for me to do it but yeah 16 light level we'll just surround it old-fashioned style and this guy will make us emeralds and that's a pretty decent speed we're getting an emerald every i don't know let's say fifth, maybe every an emerald every like nine seconds or so which each emerald obviously this is one emerald dust and we need how many 23 hmm to get six silicon okay so we need like three more collectors i'd say yeah we'll add three more okay and this should produce us a decent amount of emeralds now i just gotta find my original one grab emeralds out and do emeralds in each one of the slots perfect so if i do a barrel we'll do the netherite one why not and then obviously once you process this you get three things in oxygen so how do you make a three slot i've made one before okay so it's 
Slab, slab, slab. Okay, this should be it. Yes, perfect. Cool. So I'll do it again in the wall. Oh, you know what? That goes right into my system. I forgot. Anyways, we'll do it here for now. So limited barrel on the ground. Netherite for some reason. Back upgrades. No, not like that. How much can this hold? It doesn't tell me. But if I throw... No, I actually don't want to do that. So I need the electrolyzer. Do I have another one? No, I don't. Why would I? Ooh, tin wire is not something I made a lot of, is it? That's a dangerous game I'm playing. And I took out the barrel for the wires. Obviously, why wouldn't I? Which one was it? It was this one. Okay, that should be enough tin wires for now. And then we'll grab a turbo. Why would I have turbo? Oh, I made way too many of those. But it's fine. We basically need a bunch of turbo machine hauls anyways. Oh, I already have three wires there. And this guy, obviously, we want limited barrel for this, which we need a hopper upgrade in. And then crusher. Oh, I gotta turn teleport drops off. I only did it for the glass, but it's gonna be very annoying if I keep having to lose this guy. Yes, crusher. Items eject on. Clear. Output input. So I should start getting emeralds in here. Yes. And they are automatically crushing and I do need energy upgrades which apparently are emc by the way. So yeah, these guys are emc -able. I'm just going to throw eight in there and that should catch back up, maybe? Oh, it doesn't have power. That would help. Nope, it has power. What's the issue? Can this guy not accept power from... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, what? <laughs> I forgot. It charged because it was in my inventory. But if I throw three speed upgrades, it shouldn't kill the power? No, seems fine. Okay. Okay, not killing the power. Perfect. And I'll need that obviously and then yeah this guy slowly will make beryllium aluminum and silicon and silicon is obviously what we want the main one of and auto export perfect so yeah these guys can hold 2.1 billion so i'm not too concerned about running out of space for silicon anytime soon we're good to go and i will grab my locking tool where did my client star go please don't tell me i emc did on accident i think i might have well that's annoying i have to go fill this guy back up okay where did it go this time well that was bizarre nevertheless we're gonna fill the client star back up and then we can actually move on from doing this oh i should have my first spot to make it yeah the reason i didn't get one earlier is because i saw the osmium backed up in this ebf down here but now that's good to go and i should have tiny iridium dust how do i not have any tiny iridium dust by the way it's a five percent chance and i've definitely surpassed a five percent chance at this point i assume that is bizarre maybe it just doesn't work is it because it's locked no it's not locked hmm. yeah it has a five percent chance wow we're just very unlucky it says twenty thousand buckets on average which is obviously five percent twenty buckets However, I've definitely made enough to the point where I should have some, considering this guy has like 14 platinum inside of it. Oh, we're just really, really unlucky, I guess. I don't have it in my system somehow, right? Iridium? Nope. Wow. Oh, yeah, no, we're just really unlucky. Okay, well, we'll let this guy run. Obviously, it will run through the sulfuric solution very, very slowly. I don't think I have any upgrades left. I might, though. Oh, I have plenty. I've made so many of these at this point. That's another thing. Okay, so we still haven't got any iridium yet somehow from this guy, so we're going to have to do a bit of waiting for this. However, in the meantime, while we wait for our iridium to finish, we can do the other end of the quest line, which is pretty much just processing the rest of the oils, mainly ethyl benzene into styrene, styrene butadine, and then styrene butadine rubber, which will allow us to make RAM, and then vinyl chloride, which will allow us to make the processing unit boards. Those are the two main ones, butadine, or sorry, uh, toluene for now, we don't need to worry about for industrial TNT, and then acrylic acid and all this stuff to get boosted diesel we'll worry about once we get there. But for now, the big one is obviously vinyl chloride, which I accidentally checked off by the way, but I haven't done this. Working back obviously from argon and styrene butadine rubber you need for this we need styrene butadine which is a chemical reactor with chromium to get styrene butadine you need butadine and styrene two things we have in a chemical reactor very simple and then we chemically react it again so we need two of these guys which means i need tin cables back i seemingly forgot to do tin i did everything but tin and i don't know why it's like i forget motors need tin and there are better ways i should be doing this by the way with solar and alloy it allows you to skip the bolts part of things but for now it's fine oh i titanium in here whoops i forgot i put titanium to make rings do i have any more titanium anywhere else no i don't okay oh and also bolts for titanium as well yeah i'll grab these back and we'll let that function again back to making wires these are backwards but it's fine oh we kind of matched those up at least yeah it's only the fine wires and rods and bolts and it's fine but we'll let those craft while we let our iridium hopefully craft as well let's see if we got one since then nope still no iridium okay eventually we'll get an iridium oh the quest just popped up so we finally cut our first iridium ingot and as you see, I'm preparing a few machines. We already made this air intake for the quest line here in the EVH. However, we do get our first iridium ingot, which is nice, which will allow us to make something here. Ah, yes, monocrystalline silicon. Correct. With argon. And then obviously argon gets from the centrifuge here, which is going to take a very, very, very long time to make because you only get 35 argon for 3,000 liquid air. So this is 
something you should set up immediately, by the way. Because, yeah, you need 250 Argon buckets to make one single ram. You also need 1250 to make one monocrystalline. So, yeah, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of Argon, to say the least. However, this guy takes 30 seconds. Once you overclock it, it should be pretty fast. I will avoid the oxygen. I will put nitrogen inside of the electric mixer or industrial TNT with toluene. But, yeah, there's a lot of things to go on in that uh, section as well. Another ore processing line we do need besides our platinum line here is obviously monzonite. Now, for now, we won't worry about tungsten or titanium. Titanium we have so much of at this point, and tungsten we can't really process properly without the implosion compressor. Well, I mean, we can compress it like this, but it takes 120 seconds per nugget. Not the most viable strategy. However, once we get the implosion compressor set up, we can make tungsten ingots, but we do need industrial TNT for that as well. But the other thing we do have to process is monzonite, and monzonite is processed in a macerator, macerated, and then centrifuged into three different dusts, and as well as helium. Helium we're getting from our oil processing, so I'm probably just going to throw one tank and then avoid the rest, just for now, make it easy. But yeah, we do want neodymium, yttrium, and cadmium. Cadmium's the main one here, because we need to make cadmium batteries, which are used to make something. I need it. Ah yes, the processing uniboards. I was going to say, I need cadmium batteries for something. But yes, it's required to make the processing uniboards. So while we wait on more iridium to actually get made, which somehow we're already on two, considering it took an hour to get the first one, I'm going to process monazite, which is actually properly in the quest book now. It actually goes down to the processing board. However, yeah, we do need to make monazite immediately to get cadmium. So we'll do it right here. And something like that should work wonders. We just have monazite being pumped in, similar to the way we did platinum, get crushed, centrifuged, and then eventually this guy will get pumped out into our last limited spare spruce barrel. I used up the last netherite upgrade. Now I don't have any more left. I don't know why I used it on this. It's never going to fill that much up, but I will throw like two more stack upgrades in here. Can't hurt. And yeah, that should be fine. But yeah, that's monazite processed, which means we'll now get cadmium as a byproduct. And then we just need to process everything else, all of the fluids themselves. So that I'll probably do out on the floor or in this wall over here. Well, I do kind of need HP power, so I'm going to I'm going to continue in this wall, I guess. And eventually we will get rid of this ethanol setup. You know, what? honestly, we should get rid of it now. It will give us some chemical reactors back, and I've already made four of them. This could have saved me making all my chemical reactors because, yeah, we're not using LPG at all. I wonder, can I just get diesel from a single one? No, I need to do too high at minimum. I guess I could thermodynamic process it to get 1,000 to 2,500 because right now it's 10 to 2. You know what? That's a much better deal. Yeah, I think we're going to get rid of all of this setup here. Give me a moment. For now, what I'll do is I will void the LPG specifically, and then we'll move this over to a setup just for diesel in the future because, we, yeah, we don't need to make sulfuric acid from ethanol anymore considering we have so much sulfuric acid. Yeah, that does clean the section up a lot nicer. Eventually, we can move this into the wall. I, I wasn't planning on doing wall setups for everything, but I've kind of just gone with it at this point. We're kind of just doing walls for everything. And you know what? I will move this time torch to this guy. Yeah, why not? Hopefully this guy processes a bit faster, which will allow us to get more platinum and iridium. But you know what? It should go in the middle. God. How much platinum are we at? 11. So that's 34 total platinum already. Nice. And that also gives us four spare chemical reactors. So the first process line we actually have to get done is styrobutadine, which requires styrobutadine and bunine and styrene. So that's pretty easy. So we'll double chemical react to that and then chromium dust, chemical react, and then we'll sort it in tank. Very easy. So chemical reactor, chemical reactor tank. Oh, those are advanced machine hulls. I need my turbos, which I'm down to four. So I'm going to go grab myself styrene and butadine. So I'll grab this tank of that. All oh, right, styrene is this. This is why I needed the iron dust. I knew I needed iron dust for something. Ethyl benzene, steam, and iron dust makes styrene. Okay, so ethyl benzene. One of you come with me. So I've gone ahead and done the styrene butadine setup here. Now we have two buckets already made up, which is nice. And I'll show you the spaghetti mess that this thing does require to be made. It's pretty bad, but I do have butadine and ethyl benzene just down here manually. I will switch out the tanks until we get proper like fluid automation set up at our base. But for now, this guy is making ethyl benzene. And this is why I needed the iron dust, obviously. So iron dust, ethyl benzene, and steam are being put in, steam from the base, iron dust from just over here in the redstone electrizer, and then ethyl benzene from the tank. That gets put in, makes 
styrene and hydrogen and hydrogen i'm just avoiding don't need it and then with the butadine we're mixing that with chromium dust styrene butadine rubber and then chromium dust obviously just comes from that guy over there so that is that checked off our list so we can say we've made styrene we've made styrene butadine and we've made styrene butadine rubber now the next thing is the vinyl chloride now vinyl chloride is a mix of acetylene and hydrochloric acid and then mixed with chromium dust once again and now we have polyvinyl chloride and then this guy was used to make the processing unit boards so this guy should be pretty easy it's a chemical reactor with hydrochloric acid acetylene hydrochloric acid we can steal from over here probably yeah this guy's making hydrochloric acid at a like perfect rate so yeah, I'll probably just steal the hydrochloric acid from over here, mix it with acetylene. You know what? I'll do it right here, actually. Yeah, we'll do the setup in the middle of the floor. Say goodbye to the wall for now. Yeah, we'll just do that to make this with acetylene, which we'll bring down manually. Acetylene, obviously, we get. And then chromium dust is right beside us. So yeah, that works perfectly. Okay, do a quick setup here with that, which means I need to use advanced machine hulls for this guy, which I should have a few of. Yes. Just want to check where my cables are. Perfect. So hydrochloric acid, first step, then acetylene, which is also made from methane, if I recall correctly. Yes, it's methane in an ABF. But for now, we'll just use the acetylene we have from this it should last us pretty long considering a thousand buckets or 500 cold buckets sorry but yeah we'll do a tank right beside it and this will allow easy swapping between the two so that makes vinyl chloride easy enough and then with vinyl chloride obviously polyvinyl chromium dust in another chemical reactor auto export fluids polyvinyl chloride and then yeah that's just simply into a jumble tank as well we go export fluids and we'll get polyvinyl chloride in that tank awesome so that is very easy to do do something like that it's not the cleanest but it is a setup of that that works and eventually this should go through but yeah we can check go ahead and check all of this off oh we actually need a bucket of it well that's a weird choice but it does give us some large pumps so you know what i won't complain and we'll go ahead and check this off oh you actually require a bucket of it but it does give you eight large pumps and 50 experience levels it seems so we'll grab the bucket and we're at 700 mil buckets so it's just a waiting game how much iridium dust am i at six wow how much platinum 56 not too bad but yeah this guy should finish in just a second here perfect and that's our bucket of polyvinyl chloride and oh it's 50 50 experience not 50 levels i was gonna say that'd be insane next thing is argon I and mean, when this is just simply a centrifuge and then the nitrogen needs to go inside of a mixer but for now we'll just simply put all three into tanks our oxygen argon and nitrogen and then we'll avoid the rest but this should be pretty easy i will do centrifuge in the wall and then we'll do three tanks below oh no i want a centrifuge do i have one yes i do okay and i want turbo hulls so turbo machine hull not exactly what i wanted and then air intake oh how do i install that oh the air intake go to a vacuum freezer to make liquid air oh i see yeah i need a vacuum freezer for this specifically i see i see okay but it doesn't get consumed obviously i thought i could put it directly onto the centrifuge i mean that doesn't make sense what i was thinking but yeah if we put this in here this should make things which also means i will need to make yeah hmm i will need another vacuum freezer and we'll just take this one on the wall over here and then eventually obviously i will move on from a vacuum freezer for a hot ingots and use crowd fluid in the heat exchanger however obviously i can't use crowd fluid yet because i don't have crowd fluid <laughs> because yeah this guy requires argon and helium in the thing together but yeah we can do this next which will require another vacuum freezer eventually but for now we're just making the one so do i have any the freezer what are they called yes these guys so i'll make a bunch of those so we'll do vacuum freezer in here i'll just fill in the frost proof casings perfect so i just need item input fluid output do i have steel i should from the thing right no i want steel input Input. So, steel put hatch and then fluid. Do I have any fluid output hatches? I f oh, I have large tank hatches, that's why. Okay, so I'll make a fluid output hatch and then I'll make an HV input hatch. Perfect. So, jumbo tank like that. I will do fluid, do item input right there, HV here, and then fluid output right there. And that should be good. Throw that in there, add to our spaghetti mess like so, and you should be getting air. Perfect. And then obviously, I need to put this into the tank. Nice. So, that gives us. A decent buffer and liquid air in there and then this guy just needs to be exported into here as well which means i want this guy to be negative 10 this guy to be plus 10 this guy to be in and out similar setup liquid air and now i need three different kinds of fluid pipes so light blue orange and regular perfect oh, i need to do it from the side actually yeah we'll do it from the side nice so oxygen nitrogen and argon and then we will void them as priorities so priority 10 10 and 10 and then i'll just make another fluid trash can negative 10 negative 10 and negative 10 perfect fill in the walls 
else. And that's pretty good, I will say. I mean, it's not the best setup, obviously. Like, not the prettiest setup. However, we do have oxygen, nitrogen, and argon on demand. Argon's the big one. This guy will slowly produce it. It's not super fast by any means, but it does allow us to get argon. This guy will be monocrystalline silicon. Yeah, which is pretty expensive to do, but yeah, it's argon. And then obviously with the argon, we also have to make the ram. But that will transfer with specific tanks for now. Not a big deal. So can we make our first processing board? Now we have polyvinyl chloride, annealed copper, cadmium battery i think we can go ahead and make our first one which should uh, give us something for the quest reward yeah it gives us four of them so it's definitely worth to make that so we'll chuck all of this away go ahead and make 32 platinum plates i was making a bunch of diamond plates and diamond plates are used for this guy yeah the arithmetic logic unit so yeah we made a bunch of diamond plates more than we need but i'm not too concerned and normally I would just bring this tank over there, but I do want it for platinum as well. Perfect. So that's platinum plates and then cadmium battery and annealed copper. Oh, right. We need cadmium from down below. That would be useful. And we'll make one more. Why not? And then digital circuit boards. I should have plenty of these. Yeah, I have so many. I was just bulk crafting them at one point while I was AFK. And then platinum plates. And then some polyvinyl chloride, which I can just grab with a tank. So fill up a tank. I'm going to grab the bucket and then just do an assembler. And I should have an open assembler, maybe. This guy is polyethylene. This guy is nothing. Perfect. Bucket mode off. You, like so. And throw that stuff in there. And this guy should make some processing unit boards. Now, it will take a long time. The recipe for this takes 60 seconds. So we'll just let that cook away. And in the meantime, we'll work towards RAM. So obviously, silicon wafer is the big one. We need argon and silicon dust and iridium dust in the canthal, which means I need fluid input pipes on my anthol here. So this one's platinum, and I guess it's not really important that it's platinum, but I need a fluid input hatch. Hmm. Yeah, we'll stop Osmium from going in there before it's packed up. And in here, what did I say I was going to do? Siren Beauty to do. Right. So monocrystalline silicon. So I want silicon and iridium. Can I lock these? I don't think I can. None of your is craft. Right. But can I lock them? I don't think I can lock the input hatches. I might be incorrect in saying that. Oh, wait. I guess I can. Never mind. Obviously, I can. Lock mode off. There we go. Okay. So yeah, locked on those both. And that means I need the fluid input hatch as well. Ooh, this becomes complicated. I need it on this top piece right here because when you have canthals or sorry when you have multiple electric blasts for instance like this you can't share inputs and power inputs otherwise they won't form so there's only specific amount of areas you can actually fit things and that means we're gonna have to put the fluid in there which isn't too bad it just requires a bit of fluid pipe running which is down the middle block so it is this one right here and argon is what color i already forgot argon is orange do i have an orange back here already yes i do well we'll say whatever we have the most of white do i have a white back here i do not oh yes i do you know what it won't connect that's fine so we'll do output there and this should make us eventually once we have enough argon that is yes it'll make monocrystalline silicon perfect but obviously we also need argon to make this guy here which means we'll probably set up more than one centrifuge here i guess i could throw some advanced upgrades so if i grab some lubricant from over here let that guy continue to make lubricant yeah he makes plenty and then yeah it only requires 500 to make 32 silicon wafers which is a pretty good ratio to say the least do i have a cutting machine i don't have an electric cutting machine because i've never needed one. Oh, i was gonna say i knew i made a bunch of steel rods because they're over here still there we go so cutting machine perfect and i guess tin cable why not oh can i even do this at that recipe 16 for tin. yes i can how much do you need you need 1.25 okay and the rest of this is simply stuff we have siren butane antimony aluminum silicon wafer we'll make a ram so i guess i can make the other two things in the meantime which are very easy to make oh wait no i need silicon wafers for these as well these i can make make some ore gates a stack of those and gates two of these oh i only need the one okay well that's some arithmetic logic circuits this i will need platinum fine wire for so i'll grab some platinum and make myself some fine wire oh and it's going okay so i can turn off the input of this so we'll do in yes okay so i'm going to save the argon we'll only do the one for now and then we'll flip that back over afterwards but yeah this guy takes a long time to make it takes 75 seconds at 60 per year per tick so we'll wait for that guy to finish once that guy's done we can cut it and then we should be good to make our first processing unit board i wasn't planning on doing all of this this episode but it kind of just started happening and yeah we're kind of kind of made it at this point here now here's my sword hmm if i was a sword where would i end up well we have the platinum fine wire but i'm missing a sword and we're not entirely sure how Charge sword of sports. Nice. Well, I guess I accidentally lost my sword. Oh, we'll get that back another day. We'll get sharpness back, I guess. Cool. Yeah, for now, that should be these guys done. So, mono crystalline silicon. We'll throw in the cutting machine. 
and then yeah this guy takes a while as well 30 seconds so we'll take out our modern crystalline so we can make one of these perfect and then i need a ram so that is antimony aluminum argon and styrene butadine so aluminum and i'll set this guy to just do it over here which one this guy right here perfect so this this that and then styrene butadine and argon so two things we'll have to wait on obviously and then the next tier for quantum circuit boards requires helium 3 and iridium plates and plutonium batteries which means we need to do all of nuclear power which is going to be a lot of stuff because i've never messed around with obviously this mod so the nuclear power is going to be quite something to learn however it will allow us to get our quantum circuits at the end of this quest line but yeah it requires us to do a lot of nuclear ore processing and stuff but this should count off this quest line other than doing the pressurizer and heat exchanger and implosion compressor which we will do in the next episode because this is required to make blast proof alloy right you need blast proof alloy to make blast proof casings which i believe is for the nuclear stuff or maybe not we need the oh you need this to make beryllium and beryllium is used to make nuclear stuff right yeah nuclear makes plate right so yeah we'll need the implosion compressor and all that next episode however we'll worry about that when it comes to pass this also does give us four processing boards oh it gives us eight monocrystalline circuits oh that's so amazing okay i will grab myself a chest and auto export oh that is super nice okay that that's oh wow yeah, yeah that's great and this gives us four ram and this also allows us to make crafting units in a2 so we can finally do auto crafting which is really cool i really like the fact that they use random like uh ram to do that to lock it because yeah this guy is required to make crafting units which allows obviously auto crafting because that's obviously been what's holding us back from doing auto crafting obviously i'm doing stuff like this where we're doing advanced compacting upgrade with titanium dust to make titanium large titanium dust but yeah we can't do much auto crafting steve's cards would allow basic auto crafting as well and i'm pretty sure pretty pipes also has some form of auto crafting but we're gonna wait to get to apply ninja six that is but do we have enough argon 700 buckets and it needs 250 that is enough so argon and serenity right and there we go and that'll make us our first ram amazing and eventually we will automate this so it won't be a hassle However, this does give us four processing unit boards, which is super cool. And then, yeah, we'll do boost diesel up here as well. But I could technically just check this off and say, yep, I did it. Oh, it doesn't actually allow you to check it off. Oh, it clearly has it. Right. Cool. We got a free slime block for making something we didn't actually make. You know what? Check it in there. But yeah, once this ram's done, make this. And quest complete. That is our first ram done, which means, oh, there's my sword. Good to know. It was just randomly in the crafting terminal, which means I can get rid of this sword without enchantments. But yes, this will allow us to grab four free ram. The ram, we can make our first processing unit, which requires four digital circuits, which requires 16 electronic circuits, which requires 64 analog circuits. So it's just a ah, very, very bizarre way to do it. But nevertheless, we got our processing units down complete. This chapter is unlocked locked and now we can unlock the highly advanced processing and you know what just because i can oh of course chromium plates we've never made chromium ingots Ooh, interesting you know what i will set up an ebf to do two stacks nothing more not too big of a deal but i will do two stacks of chromium in this guy right here and yeah we'll set up chromium ingots for now and eventually we'll get a lot more considering we have seventy-four thousand up there but yeah we'll let our base run okay everybody i'm gonna wrap up the episode there i do want to say thanks for watching i know this episode was very much all over the place and there's been a lack of videos recently however as you've seen i've done a lot of afk loading at the base not the best way to do it obviously if i had better setups i wouldn't have to afk load for as long however i've been gathering resources and making sure the videos don't seem as grindy and i'm really much just showing off the mod pack more so if you guys prefer this style let me know if you prefer the old style where i'm grinding on camera as much but at this point you've seen it all it's just waiting on quarries to finish doing things and machines to finish doing things but yeah it's we'll see i, I i'm gonna test this out and then eventually once we most likely start gtnh at the end of this month or at the end of this pack to say it'll be a different breed for that pack obviously because gtnh is a whole another beast nevertheless guys like i said thanks for watching if you did enjoy leave a like on the video it means a lot and if you don't want to miss any future uploads hit that subscribe button and if you learned something or want to teach me something about any of my failed setups down below let me know in the comments below i read them all and i do appreciate them thanks for watching everybody see you in the next one Bye bye